All right, guys, good afternoon. Brian with Vet Source here again on another sunny afternoon. Thought we'd take a minute today to talk about an issue that came up because I had a couple of customers looking for these and it was a good system to talk about. So, figured we'd take a minute to talk about this uh, low tire pressure warning system that was installed on Corvettes beginning in 1989, believe it or not. Uh, and this would be RPO code UJ6 is what we're working with. So for those of you that are not familiar, um, low tire pressure monitoring systems were actually talked about for quite a bit uh, as far back as I think in the 70s where the National Highway and Traffic Safety Association was uh, basically conferring to the government how uh, a monitoring system would be kind of a safety issue on cars that was kind of would be beneficial. But the problem back in the 70s was the technology just wasn't there to develop a monitoring system. And not only that, it was very expensive per car. So even though there were several recommendations made in the 70s and the 80s, this system did not actually make itself uh, available until of all things, the first car that actually received a tire pressure monitoring system was the 1987 to 1989 Porsche 959. Uh, and of course that was producing such low numbers probably nobody even noticed that or even had any experience with it um, and then of course the Corvette was really the first production car that had the uh, tire pressure monitoring system put on it installed on it in 1989 and about 45,000 Corvettes C4s ended up with this tire pressure monitoring system because it was still at that point an option it was not required on cars until I want to say 2008 I think is when it became a requirement that they all had to all had to have it and it kind of went into overdrive after the Ford Explorer fiasco of the early 90s where Ford Explorers were flipping over due to low tire pressure and other things like that so you know it became kind of a, a, a system that was recognized and now it's expected and everything but it's interesting that you know a lot of cars still roll around with Adam and then of course the Corvettes the C4s especially even though this was an incredible piece of tech for the era, um, in fact, when you think about C4s, right, other than the digital dash in 84, which was knock it out of the park cool, especially as a teenager, with that Atari-like dashboard that was colorized, of all things, there wasn't really much tech on Corvettes until they started in 86 with the electronic air conditioning, which was even then kind of basic. It was still just a blue and greenish uh, number with buttons on it telling you the temperature and outside air temperature and you could calculate it. So 89 is really when we got into the heavy duty tech for Corvettes, uh, excuse the aircraft guys, I'm on the flight path today, of, um, of electronics. And this is a first generation, obviously, uh, system. And in 89, they introduced this as well as the FX3 electronic suspension, which I'll get into in another video. But anyway, as you can see, this is actually all the components that made up a low tire pressure warning system, right? you had four individual sensors that are band clamps okay these actually went around the inside of the tire and here was your sensor right here so you had four different sensors right and um, each position had a different color label so you have four different color labels on these you have orange which is right uh right rear you have green which i think is right front you have yellow which is left front, and then you have blue, which is left rear. I think I've got them mixed up, but I keep forgetting which one's which. So the sensors themselves in this first generation system uh, are pretty crude by today's examples that are actually built into the valve stem and, and frankly safer. And then of course what you had that made up the heart of the system were these modules. Now this is the earlier module from 89 when it was first introduced. And of course this is the later modules that got put on 1992s. So there's actually two different variations of these sensors and modules. So the first generation, I'm gonna show you here real quick, is the black module with the black receiver, or the, the receiver, I should say, and the black sensor, right, black housing. And then you've got your GM part number actually put right on there. It's a 10098496. And of course, the uh, GM part number 14093167 or 87, it says. And of course in 92 they switched over to this lighter colored sensor and that was a 10 16 18 57 with a 10 16 18 58 right which if you'll notice the numbers align out pretty carefully now this system was so basic and that's part of why in the title i used useless 
because as cool as this piece of tech was in 1989, this has kind of become very outdated. And the problem with these systems is not only do they give you very little information other than, hey, guess what? You have a low flat tire or, hey, guess what? This module's messed up and it's not working. It doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you the tire pressure. It doesn't tell you which tire. So you basically got to go on a hunting expedition to figure out which tire is bad, which one's got low pressure, and or which one has a problem. Now here was the deal, right? You've got two different lamp bulbs coming out of these, right? One was to illuminate the DIC light that showed low flat tire. The other one was to show that you had, you needed to service the LTPWS system, which was literally, that's all it told you. So let's say one of these lights, after they do the bulb function check when you start the car up, uh, comes up low flat tire. Okay, great. Which tire is it? So you go around with a manual tire pressure gauge and figure out, oh, my right front is a low tire. Fill it back up. But if you got the service LTPWS, that either meant that this module went bad or you've got one of the sensors is not transmitting to the module. It's not receiving the, uh, the signal, right? So then you've got to figure out which one of my tires is bad and what's happening. Now, you may have noticed that if you were looking at these labels while I was showing them, every one of these things has, where is it? Oh, it's on there, there we go. An FCC ID on there. Now this FCC ID basically transmits to a, or translates to a radio code, okay? These operated on an FCC um, signal, right? And I'm pretty sure it was UVHF. I don't remember for sure. But anyway, basically what these sensors were was a barometric pressure inside, sensor inside of here. And when it actually received the barometric pressure signal changed inside of each one of them, it would send, send a signal to this module and tell it to eliminate the bulb. That was it. That was the entire system, right? So when you this first came out, like I said, it was very popular, almost 50,000 Corvettes got this installed on them from 89 to 96 and you had to pay extra for this system. I think it was three or four hundred dollars. It was not cheap by any stretch of the imagination as far as options go. But the problem is, as they wore in and they got worn out, these failed, right? They, and in fact, this one's failed right here. I'm gonna show you in a second what's inside there. But these just went bad, right? Then you had the other problem where you take these to tire shops and GM actually put a sticker on every rear rim, on the beat of the rim, uh, on the cars that had UJ6 low tire pressure and says break the bead right here because if you don't you're going to damage the tire pressure sensor because what will happen is the ram the hydraulic ram would come through right there hit that sensor and break it right off of there now the other thing I don't like about these frankly and this is personal preference this is just a band clamp on the inside of here right and as these have gotten older we're talking 32 year old tech right these are failing right the plastics come apart you don't want one of these coming apart at speed inside your wheel where you're riding down the road because that's just dangerous. So that's kind of why I looked at it and the way I titled this video, guys, was not to cause arguments, just to show you that as cool of a piece of tech as this was, this is by now pretty much an obsolete and useless system because not only is it dangerous in a lot of ways, but if it goes bad, you're in a pain in the butt. It's one of the only things that I recommend to people, don't bother changing it. Don't bother trying to fix it. Just pull the bulbs. And I never do that. I, I really don't ever recommend go-arounds because I've worked in the era restoration industry into Corvettes for so many years now. Um, but these are one of those things that it just it's not necessary in the car. And it's a lot easier and a lot less um, hassle in the end run just to disconnect those bulbs. And then if you ever get around to changing the tires, check all the sensors. And if you got a bad one, see if you can find one. Because a lot of guys don't hold these anymore. These have been thrown away by the hundreds of thousands, right? I think I have in my stock probably 40 or 50 of these left, but I sell them pretty sparingly just because they don't come up. Now let me show you an example too of what happens. So I've got the clamp taken off of here. And what I have right now is a customer that needs one of these, but we don't have the right sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and let him use the, the band clamp and the housing for his, even though it's not the right position. So if you hear this, Hear that rattle around in there? That thing is broken, it's damaged. So let's take a look and I'm gonna show you exactly what's inside this thing. So once that comes loose from the clamp, right? The clamp just runs through there on either side. We pull this off and what we're gonna find, I bet you the batteries come loose on it. 
That's the other thing too, is the batteries go out in these and they don't hold up. And there we go, look at that. So, <laughs> not only the battery, okay. So here you see here is, this is actually your barometric pressure sensor. And you can see on there, 25 PSI, lot number 904. This actually looks like it may have been a replacement. But once it gets below 26, that's when it trans or 25, that's when it transmits the signal. And you'll see that actually on even the new ones. I know my Suburban, when it gets lower than 25, it tells me it's got a problem. So that sensor, see how it's got, it's almost like a, a P-dot tube that you see on a aircraft uh, in a way. In fact, it is. It looks just like a miniature P-dot tube, which if you don't know what a P-dot tube is, it's an air data sensing mechanism on aircraft to let them know about barometric pressure and things of that nature. So it's probably built on the same principle as an aircraft. And of course, this is just to hold it in place right here. But you can see here, this circuit board is trash. There's even one of the resistors. And this just came apart because it got old, right? And there's your individual pieces. I believe this was a magnet. Somehow this magnet made purpose or had a purpose to it inside of here. I think it went through here. Um, circuit board itself looks fairly decent and is probably repairable in the long run. But the thing about these, like I said, I'm almost certain the battery was contained inside this, but I may be wrong. I know the new ones have batteries that go out and you have to replace them pretty frequently. But here again, this shows what happens to some of this. And like I said, in the late 80s, as GM was ramping up their technology uh, applications in cars, adding all kinds of cool electronic functions and things that normally wouldn't be in the cars, this is one of the earlier adopters. And it's a cool, neat system. Like I said, when it came out, I thought it was really cool too that the car would tell you, hey, I got a flat tire or low pressure, but you still had to get out with, with your tire pressure gauge and go figure out what it was. And lo and behold, if it told you just service the system, because to get to this, that is buried under the dash pad and you're going for an expedition for an afternoon or, or a couple days to figure out how to get that thing out of there because you can't just grab it from the top. So anyway, uh, just thought I'd bring this to you, UJ6 tire pressure system. Thought it was something interesting we could talk about. I will be back next week. I've actually got quite a few topics lined up for us because it just seems like for some reason, all of a sudden, late summer, early fall, I've got a lot of interesting things that are failing on people's cars and even my cars so we can discuss. So that's going to do it for today, guys, and I'll be back in touch next week. We'll see you all then. Thanks for watching.